Welcome. Hello. <laughs> okay, that was awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name. Sorry, my name is Mark. He, I play D and D. He threw us. A, he threw out the first pitch, and we both went. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hello there, adventurers, and welcome to Wall ADM. Today, we're going to have a D&D discussion on what level you can start your campaign at as far as the characters that are going to be playing in it. And along with me on this discussion today is the Dungeon Class YouTube channel, Mark and Gonzo. Hi, thanks for having us. Hey, guys. Thank Yeah, thanks, Wally. No problem at all. Thanks for joining us. I'm really excited about this topic. We've already talked about it a little bit, and now we get to share it with all of you. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, we've kind of broken this down a little bit into four different tiers. We've got tier two, which is like levels one through four. We've got tier three, which is levels five through 10, and tier four, which is 11 to 20. Now, I did skip tier one because tier one is a level zero, which is something that I'd never heard of up until like the past year or so, and a lot more people are talking about it. So we're actually going to start there. And I believe Gonzo's got a few words to say on that because I am really not as familiar with a level mm -hmm. zero type of a campaign. So uh, yeah. Gonzo, go ahead and get us started. What is a level zero campaign? And tell us what's good about it and what might not be so good about it. Sure. So a level zero campaign uh, to start is, is a time when your players start literally with nothing, not even their class. So they, don't, they may not have many clothes on at all. They may not have any weapons at all, nothing handed down from generation to generation. They may be captives somewhere on a ship, you know, or uh, underground in a dro city, and they've got to figure out their way out. Uh, they may not even know their full name yet. Um, uh, this is actually a, a fun way to start a campaign. We've done it a couple times now. We did it in our Dark Sun campaign that we ran and kind of homebrewed for up, you know, to bring it up to fifth edition. And um, it was it worked perfect for that gritty, rough setting. And then we've we've done it another time where I had them as captives on a ship. And one of the guys they had no weapons. I didn't know how they're going to get out. But one of the guys was a lizard born. He, this, he asked, hey, can I break off my tooth and uh, use that to pick the lock? And as a good DM, I said, you could try. Let's see. And, <laughs> and it worked out. It worked out great. They were, in, you know, they were very creative. They escaped. They were able to take out the guard and, and kind of start off fresh. Now, one of the good things about it is that the characters um, quickly got into the the role of having to gather resources like everything mattered what they could eat drink where to protect themselves what weapons they could find um and so that was really neat and i love the grittiness of it i'd say one of the downfalls is it could they could quickly die so <laughs> creating the big backstory for these characters you may actually tell your players look we're going to start we're going to start in a in a place a place where you don't have anything and let's not worry about your backstory right now. You can come up with that later uh, because mm -hmm. they may not make it at all. So, <laughs> so, so level zero for you is like D&D Survivor. Like it is. It's like Survivor. <laughs> like let's let's get these characters together, see who makes it, and then let them decide. You know, they want to pick something out. Now, I know there was Mark or, or Wally. There was an idea we talked about too, where they could start because of something they may have seen or something, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we we're tossing that around a little bit. So, mm -hmm. one of my ideas that. Uh, Introducing, I, I'm a newbie to the to the level zero idea, mm -hmm. but I kind of picture it almost like a movie script. And you've got at the beginning of the movie, let's say these four kids, these sixteen year old kids, and they are from all from the same town. They venture down into this these caves or this dungeon, and then they see something that forever changes their lives, or something like a like this magical item. They're they're going through there. They're forbidden to go down there. They go anyway, and there's this item that calls to them. They're very, very tempted, and they eventually they just close it up and get out of there. Or perhaps they witness like a cult of like Asmodeus, like a like a, a double cult or something like that. And let's take that a step further. Let's say if you have four players, maybe there's a fifth member, like an NPC that is one of their best friends growing up. And as the five of them go down there, four got away, but one didn't. And after that happened, all four of the player characters are changed forever. And 
the next yeah. session when they finally level up to level one, it's like a year later and they can deal with the aftermath. So it, it sounds like a lot of fun level zero just to set up these like quest ideas. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. It's, it makes me want to play that actually. So that's, yeah, that's that sounds good. Definitely. If you're willing to a, DM, we'll be there. Uh, it's it's a great way to set up. Yeah, it's a great way to set up a big bad evil guy. You mm -hmm. see him and go, whoa, he's so powerful and all that only to maybe face him way down the campaign because they're not ready because he's so powerful. But I love that idea of planting that seed early. So mm -hmm. they're like, oh my gosh, that guy is horrible. Oh, I want to get that guy. But they're going to have to go through a lot to get to that point where they're ready to fight him. So that, that's a great, great element. Yeah. I like I like that the, the characters all have a shared background element to it too, which mm -hmm. is kind of yeah. rare. Usually everybody comes at a story with a background and it's, you know, they rarely tie together. This is kind of neat. So yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, cool. All right. Now, now you make me want to run my first session <laughs> zero. <laughs> I, I've never, or not session zero, but uh, level zero. I've, level I've zero. never done that before, but I'm yeah. kind of excited to do that now. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to our second tier, which is levels one through four. And whichever one of you want to take that. I can speak to that. I love that that time because that one thing about it as a DM is everything can kill you when they're younger. Uh, and mm -hmm. so it, the element of danger is really kicked up a notch. They, they, they're learning their, their character. They're learning. They have a very limited number of spells. They haven't even picked an area of expertise. Maybe they haven't really uh, or just starting to pick an area. And so they're so you, you can uh, challenge them fairly easy at that level. Uh, and I like that about it. And so there's that that element that, oh my gosh, I could die. Uh, mm -hmm. There's figuring it out, figuring, learning their character and learning what, what works for that character. So uh, that's what my favorite kind of sweet spot. The only bad thing about that, as we talked about, is that if you keep starting and stopping, like you, you play for a bit and they get up to level four and then the the, the group falls apart and then you, okay, mm -hmm. well, I'm, yeah. as I'm starting another <laughs> campaign with this group and everyone's starting at level one like oh great you know so there's always a constant it's kind of like uh, uh like groundhog day you keep doing the same thing over and <laughs> i think I, I feel like i've done level one before but mm -hmm. uh right. so, it, so there's that element to it so they didn't really get to get going if you're always starting at level one or, or low level like that yeah good point yeah and we talked about that it, D, D is built where you learn precept by precept so your mm -hmm. your character you can grow into your character really well if you're able to start off at first level you yeah. pick what you want to be, and you're mm -hmm. just gaining more spells, more skills, more abilities as you go. You really become really good at that character because you, right. you've learned the basics, and, and now you're just adding a little bit at a time. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I think I'd like to add on a little bit there. I am a huge fan of level one characters and starting a campaign at level one. I just really like to watch the characters grow. I like to see them discover their abilities. But it's not so much the, the the technical, the tactical side of it. It's the role-playing things. I, I, I want to throw, mm -hmm. in the beginning levels, I want to throw some characters in there that or NPCs that are higher level and see how they deal with them. I want to develop the story at level one. So for me, level one campaigns are my absolute favorite just because the the characters or the players grow into their characters, but also because the DM grows into the characters as well and, and gets to know them. It's just That's like, true. Yeah. it's like we all showed up, we have cocktails. It's time to learn to know each other <laughs> yeah. and things like that. Now, yeah. uh, levels two, three, and four, I've started there before and, and I would probably be okay with that with experienced players and stuff, mm -hmm. but especially if everybody's new to each other, they're playing new characters and stuff. Level one, that's, that's where I like to be. Yeah, that's the sweet spot for sure. So let's look at the mid-level, which is levels 5 through 10. Now, those of you out there that are players, you absolutely know that level 5 is that sweet spot. You get your mm -hmm. fireball, you get your extra attack, things like that. Take us into levels 5 through 10. Why would we start a campaign at that level, or why wouldn't we start a campaign at that level? I think, for one, it might be out of necessity. Uh, the, you know, some of the, if you're going to do a module, uh, often, like say Curse of Strahd, it's going to have a level that, and if you've not done Death House as the beginning, for one through three or four, wherever you end up, uh, then you're going to have to you're going to have to start at that level, and so that kind of determine it kind of sets it for you as it says, you know, you open it up and it says for players X number and one, mm -hmm. that's that's where you would have to be, um, and and there's definitely, I mean, the one thing that's nice about that level is that now you're starting to get some really cool things. You know, yeah. and each of the characters really starts to get some of that, those cool spells, those cool abilities and all that. 
that's awesome for the player. The downside of that <laughs> is is that they have to learn all those those things on the fly. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I know, and Mark, that's really good. I think that one of the keys too is that it's a lot of fun as a dungeon master to be able to start at level five or six or whatever. Yeah. Because especially if the group is experienced and can learn their players quick, because you can take your monster annual and open it up and start going, <laughs> start having a lot of fun, yes. going nuts a little bit. Don't mm-hmm. be afraid to throw a young dragon. Don't be afraid to pull out a beholder. You know, it, it, it starts to be an opportunity to uh, to really just just go nuts and, and, and really challenge the players. You mean they get some dragons in their dungeons? Oh, that's a that's a novel idea. It just yeah, might work. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and just to throw in on that, uh, all great points. I I, I don't have a, a lot to add, but I do like the idea of going up to that next level on the monster manual. And of course, when we do start our characters off somewhere between levels fives and ten, or between levels five and ten, mm-hmm. we we want to make sure that they are familiar with their with their characters. So I would definitely, definitely, definitely make talk to the players and say, hey, make sure you know all your stuff and things like that. But also, that's going to be a lot of homework for the DM as well. So I would also have to be very, very familiar with their with their characters. And not only that, but uh, the monsters as well. But I, I, I do like the idea of that, especially with a seasoned group or a more experienced group. I think it could be a lot of fun starting 5 through 10 and taking on some of those harder modules, as you, as, as you said. And it could be very necessary if you're using a pre-made adventure. Yes, because a pre-made adventure has the the encounters already set up for you, and you you know you where it's, if you homebrew it, you can kind of alter it, which you can alter a pre-made too. But a pre-made adventure may say, you know, this is good fifth level up to seventh level or whatever. And mm-hmm. so if you try to run a, a a level group that's that's not that a first level group, you're just going to blast them out, you know. So right. I think that may be a necessity there, but. Absolutely. Okay, so let's take a look at our last level, level four there, the 11 through 20th level characters. Now, straight out, I got to ask you guys, does anyone ever get to level 20? And what kind of madness are we going to do where we start a campaign out in this range? I can tell you that according to the statistics D&D Beyond, people drop out of the game pretty much around 10 or 11. So the vast majority of people aren't making it past level 10 or 11. Uh, and mm-hmm. and I, I wonder what all the factors are in there. You know, is it because their group falls apart? <laughs> is that, you know, and I think yeah. that's probably a, a big probably. chunk of it. They just that's can't stay together for that long period of time. And it's that that's a, just a logistic thing. Um, mm-hmm. I, I do think it starts to get more and more complicated for the dungeon master, right, Gonzo? I mean, you're trying to, you're trying to, yeah, <laughs> you're trying. You're trying to make them uh, you yeah. know, be challenged. You talked about opening the DM, the the monster manual. There's just a thin section for the higher levels. That you're is- dropping them into other planes. They're going yeah. into hell and and taking on Mephisto himself. I mean, whatever. Right. You know, it's it's uh, it, it gets to the point where yes, it's cool as a player to reach these capstone abilities and have all these cool, but you've got to be very good DM, very experienced, and very creative. And it can be done. I know my son has run high-level uh, one-shots or two-shots, you know, uh, just to try it out, and he's had a lot of fun doing that. I haven't personally done a lot of that because we run more campaign style, and we just don't get to that point. I think our longest-running campaign right now, we're at 14th level or so, and I'm already thinking in my mind when we get back to there, we kind of left them in a good stopping point. But when we get back to there, I want them involved in armies where they're going against armies or helping. You know, uh, you don't know this, Marcus. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> Spoiler, but uh, yeah, where they're, you know, involved in giant battles and that kind of thing. I, I've got to be creative as a dungeon master. No. Yeah. Now you can drown somebody and they could be 20th level if they can't use their hands or. You know, whatever. There's there's still things you can do. Puzzles or traps or something may work. And while you right. get at that, you may have some highlights. Absolutely. Man. That's that's what I always tell everybody. It's like, hey, you need an encounter? I got an encounter for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy. I, I got a book. I know a guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so, all right. So this level here, as far as uh, between 11 and 20, I don't know if I personally would start any campaigns at that level. And, and that's primarily because of my experience as a DM in 5th edition. Mm-hmm. I'm not as familiar with it. I 
I, I, I work full-time job, everything else to try to do content creation. I don't know if I could study up enough to know the monsters well enough and know the characters well enough to run a campaign of that high of a level. Now, if I was more familiar with it, or if I had a, a group that I played with all the time, I think we could probably do that. I think, okay, everybody, we're going to start at 14th, 15th level. And we're going to do that. But now if, if you just want to taste what it's like to run a high level monster yeah. or taste what it's like to play a high level character, then I think where you're really going to shine at is one shots. And, yeah. And, and who's to say that your one shot can't turn into finishing out as a campaign? You do a one shot for 14th level. Everybody has fun. Hey, let's continue this thing. Let's mm -hmm. let's keep going. We all did really well. Let's mm -hmm. go because the ultimate prize. And if you can put this into your players, that 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 20th level is the ultimate prize, and try to get them to be focused on that and be like, I want to be a 20th level god. Then. Mm -hmm. Or a yeah. legend, a legend in the land. A or legend, Mark, yes, Mark, absolutely. You were saying that you become a lich. Yeah, my yes. warlock needs to become a go. lich. Yeah, that's that's his ultimate goal. Long-term so. goals. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We all have yeah. goals. Now, as far as in real life time, Mark, if you were to start your character at level one with the goal to be a lich, you may be playing until 2032. So, <laughs> that's I mean, true. so that's uh, another yeah. good reason that you want to start your your campaign off at uh, between the 11th and 20th level is so that you can fulfill your lich dreams and mm -hmm. get there in that amount of time. Yeah, but it, but it sense. is fun to drop a dragon right on them. You know, no matter what level, you just <laughs> drop it on them. Absolutely. Well, I like your point about you were saying not being able to study up enough maybe to pull that off. And that I, I was thinking a lot of the monsters that are at that level that can challenge them have lair actions and legendary resistances. And the same goes for the players. I mean, the players have like, you know, eight attacks that nothing can hit them. They've got all these resistances. And, and, and so you start looking at all that and you're like, man, combat would go on forever. I mean, and, and that's that would be... And, that, and that's a that's a challenge right there in itself. Yeah, and, and I think that's more too. That's where the experienced group comes in. I mean, you can have an experienced DM, but inexperienced players, and that combat's gonna run slow, and vice versa. But if if you got an experienced group that have worked together before, I I, I think you could probably accomplish that. Yeah. Even some, I think it could work too with small groups. Like yeah. If it's yeah. Two yeah. two or three players. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah maybe better. that would work because then combat's not too bad. Right. And they are they don't have every skill, you know, there's still mm -hmm. something where they may be lacking where you could challenge them. But right. but you get our groups, five or six or seven, and yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh man, that sounds awful. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> it does, it does. Yeah. We're all yeah. 18th level and combat yeah, yeah. lasts for three days. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah awesome. All right, uh, so that is our video on what level would you start your campaign? So make sure that you leave a comment below. Let us know about all the tiers. What's your experience with level zero, the early levels, the mid levels, and the high levels? And what are some of your goals for the characters? And I, once again, want to thank Dungeon Class for coming on. Mark Gonzo, uh, no, tell us you. about your channel and where people can find you. Yeah, you can find us, at, uh, obviously, at our YouTube channel. Uh, we're also on all the socials. Uh, our, our channel, we have new videos every Monday. We talk about all different things, including death and disease and, and gold and cheating and all the important things in Dungeons yeah, & Dragons. Come on over. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we're glad That's to have fun. you. So, uh, Wally DM, thanks for having us on your show. Honestly, this is great. Yeah, absolutely. it's an honor. Yeah, nope. thank you so much. We love your puzzles and traps especially. We love the new product that you've put out. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that before we finish up? The puzzle encounters. <laughs> Available now on Drive Through RPG. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, awesome. Uh, thanks you. Uh, thanks to both of you for coming on. I appreciate it. This was a great discussion. I had a lot of fun with it. So to the folks that are watching this, make sure you comment below. Let us know your thoughts on these ideas. Make sure you go check out the Dungeon Class channel. And until next time, everybody, thanks for watching and on to the next.